All right. Hi, everybody, and welcome. This is Catherine Perry, the Big Vision Coach, and welcome to our weekly virtual Commanding Wealth Circle, where we come together as a community to, one, practice the principles of the one command uh, that was written by, written and created by Asar Lovejoy, and um, now is in a seminar form that I've been teaching for the last, oh, 10 years or so uh, called commanding wealth. And so it's like, how can we take this principles, these ideas, this little technique and apply it to our daily life? The focus that we work on, like we call it commanding wealth, but when we think about wealth, wealth is more than money. And there's more that um, wealth uh, creates for us. There's the reasons that we wanna have wealth and there's the ways that we want to create that. And all of it's really um, just a metaphor and a story about um, your identity and relationships. And once you feel like you have this um, story about your money and your power and your place and your abilities, then you can change anything in your life. So I just want you to know that we're you know, not all about the money, <laughs> but uh, money seems to be uh, up in the conversation so much with people. This is why I um, felt like it was really an important topic. Um, we've got some new folks on. Betsy has uh, kind of been, you know, I know Betsy, she's been around for a bit, We but we have a lot of new people coming on. And so I just want to say welcome to the circle. <laughs> and um, I want to also just, um, I'm going to mute everybody if you don't mind. And I see we've got 10 people in the group today. So I'm going to mute all. Yes, I'm going to call out who I see. Well, we have Alvaro, who's from, the, he's from Colombia, South America. <laughs> Hola, Alvaro, I'm so happy you're here. We've got Betsy, we've got Nash, who's in Angola, Africa. Um, we've got Elaine, who's in, um, I think, North Nevada. Joanna, who's in Florida, and Karen, Massachusetts, and Maria's, I think you're California. Um, Richard and Betsy's like um, North, uh, the um, northern part of New York State, and then um, Susan, Canada, and I'm in Texas. So we're coming in from all over the world to meet together and celebrate. So I'm sure I said something wrong on Car Maryland. Carolyn's from Maryland. Maryland. <laughs> well, you know, everything that's not Texas is... <laughs> <laughs> a foreign land, I guess. But um, I wanted to just kind of explain how the circle works. And then um, we usually do a quick check-in. Today, um, what I'd like to do, ask you to do is to put in the chat bar what it is that you're commanding for and uh, how we can support you. A lot of times we have this idea about what we want and what block we think we have, but it, we don't usually think about the support that we need. Like what, what help are you needing? And like Richard was saying earlier that I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, like in the brainstorming and let's pull this out, let's look at the big picture and move around. And when I work with people also, they'll have their big dream, their vision, uh, the thing they wanna accomplish, but then they, run up against some of the limitations in their thinking, they start, uh, you know, running head on, headlong into their doubts and fears. And then sometimes they don't even know what's possible. And so because they don't know what's possible, it's hard for them to um, really even consider it, right? If you don't know, you don't know what you don't know, what you don't know, right? And so sometimes having someone there with you to help guide you is very helpful but also to have someone who is the witness of the master that you already are and the one who has been gifted with the dream and the vision. And what I know that you have an idea about that you often forget when you meet your, uh, when you start moving forward is that you already have everything you need in order to accomplish it within you right? But what you may need help with is someone to um, 
give help or support. Sometimes you need encouragement. Sometimes you need an accountability person. Sometimes you just need some information. So um, what I want to know is how can we as a, a community best support you? Right now we're meeting each other as masters. We're holding this space for each other and we're kind of um, getting the borrowed benefits as one person's beliefs start getting cleared and they're awakened to this other level of potential within them, then that creates an awakening and then that awakening creates this awakening, creates that awakening and it's a, just a, a beautiful experience which we have really have been enjoying the last few weeks. Guys, would you agree that it's been um, really <laughs> beautiful? So today I you know, had something I wanted to share and um, then we're going to do some commands, but I want to uh, just kind of walk through a little bit about why the one command and what the heck that is. All right. Yes. <laughs> um, let me get, find my slides here. All right. So in the one command, the one command itself is a statement. Okay. And it's part of a process. All right. And in this one command process, let me see if I can make this bigger. There we go. We are actively taking you into a state that is the natural state of creation. This is the steps we're walking you through are the steps that your brain already naturally goes to. Now, a lot of people have different ways of getting to that state. Sometimes it is through prayer. Sometimes it's meditation. Sometimes, you know, running, um, exercise. Sometimes we just, you know, kind of like have to just step back and do something. Um, I have to tell a funny story on myself that um, I was uh, spending an evening with some folks, some ladies that had paid me to be with them. And we were just saying, hey, let's just one, let's just meet your beliefs, let's do some commands, let's just go into this expansion space together. They just really wanted to um, build on what they had uh, experienced that day. And so we're hanging out in their room and then something would happen, a, a question would arise. And then I would literally say, you know, I don't know, let me think about it, we'll come back to that. And this happened two or three times, but here's the funny thing that happened. Every time it, we'd kind of get to this where, you know, we're, we're having dinner, we're drinking, and when I'm working and talking a lot, I drink a lot of water, and so I'd have to excuse myself and go to the restroom, and, and if there's a lot of energy going, I have to go to the restroom more often, <laughs> and so something would come up, and I'd say, you know, I don't know, but I need to go to the bathroom right quick, I'll be right back, and they're like, okay, and I'd come back and go, oh, here's the answer, and then we'd go it again, and um, we'd start talking and planning, get creative, and we'd run up against something, and they'd ask for, you know, ask a question and I'd go, you know, I know that I know this, but I'm going to come, I've got to come back to it. But, you know, right now, let me um, move around. Let me stretch. I'm going to hit the potty right quick, come back. And I'd be in there and be like, oh, here's the answer, right? And I'd go back out. This happened two or three times. And finally one said, is Yoda in the bathroom? Are you making phone calls? What's happening? <laughs> And like what happened is it's kind of like the same thing that would happen if you've ever lost your keys and you're looking around and you're getting frustrated and you're trying to push. We disengage for just a minute and allow the answer to arise up. Well, we have our strategies for doing that, but what we don't necessarily have is like we'll have that aha moment, we'll have that realization. And um, studies have shown that that aha is exciting. There's a lot of energy. Um, there's, it can be a full color picture, but the brain is not equipped to record the information. Isn't that interesting? And that's why you get that great idea and you go, what was that? What was that thing I was telling you? And it's almost like a dream and that's why you need to write it down. Well, we get this big aha, right? We get this realization, then what it has to go through in order to be fulfilled is we have to take in this idea and let it run through our experience. And the way we're set up is we do this search called, we're gonna to look to the past. What do we know about it? What have we ever heard 
been taught or experienced? What, we, what have we seen in television or the movies or we read in a book? And we're trying to look back into our past experience to see how it could match up and support what we know, right? Or this premise. And this is how like science and peer review and, you know, so much study is done. We look back and like what would support it. And then we go, well, here's all of the facts and here's everything that supports it. And then if we want to put together this new idea, we've got to like take all this stuff from the past to support that premise to break through to this new learning or potential, right? That's just how we're set up. This is how we thrive. This is our ordinary way of thinking and it's brilliant. And there's a lot of benefits that can happen. The only thing is that a lot of people don't know how to think about it. They don't know how to examine it. And so, and, and the reason is, it's not just that they haven't been taught. It's because they're in what's called a particular paradigm. They're in this particular experience then be based on their past, their experience, what they were taught was possible and what, you know, what beliefs were formed when they were young, this created a lens of reality, okay? And so unless it matches that lens, that very narrow lens of reality, we're not going to be able to get the information. We're not going to be able to see it. We're not going to be able to experience it. I saw this great picture about um, it was uh, these tourists had gone to Alaska and they're, they've got their cameras and they've got binoculars and that looking around and they're just hoping to spot something out in nature and about 30 feet behind them just just kind of in their blind spot is a grizzly bear. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because one are they they're looking in the wrong direction but they're looking through the wrong lens right so if you think about wanting a solution to a particular problem and you only have this little narrow lens and your solutions over here and you try to look around but you're limited even on where you think you can look and you're limited on what you think is possible for you and what's permitted for you and all of that then even if you see it you might not be able to take action on it but you might actually delete it you might literally like be looking right at it and because it doesn't match your internal viewer lens it'll it'll be invisible to you okay so how can we stop that how can we expand that view well we do it through this process of going to the six steps of theta. We take you even beyond what you can imagine, okay? And as we're doing this, it's not just a mind exercise. We are doing this at a physical neurological level. Now, the reason we say that that's true and even at a DNA level is that right now, the way you do anything is the way you do everything and we are set up on a particular system and it creates this neurological cycle. Um, Candace Pert in um, her book Molecules of Emotion started studying addiction and uh, particularly like how can we use neuroscience to end addiction. And so how does addiction work? And they, they studied the patterns and the stimulus and everything. And then started noticing that really in addiction, more than the addiction to the drug, there's addiction to the pattern and there's a payoff. So if you've ever known someone who is a drug addict or um, alcoholic, when they're trying to get clean, right? They're just going, you know, I really, I don't want to drink anymore and I'm doing really good and things are doing good, but then they start getting anxious, right? And we think, oh, it's the alcohol addiction. But what's starting to happen is that emotion that that alcohol initially suppressed is starting to rise up and they didn't have the resources, right? But then what did they do in order to get to that is they replicate the original pattern that set all this up to begin with 
so that they could get the reward of the drink, which is a big dopamine hit, right? So they're actually a lot of times addicted to drama. We get addicted to um, wealth hoarding, which we're seeing now, but hoarding is a form of addiction. We, we get these and um, we get addicted to information. You know, we like, we just grab, we wanna get all of this information. We can get addicted to food. We get addicted to attention all of this and it's feeding this whole dopamine cycle and it's this how are we validated how are we protected how are we safe and our cycle gets all set up in our neurology but when we're doing the one command and i'm doing this kind of having to gloss over a lot of points when we do the one command and we start lowering your brain wave to go into this theta brain wave which is an expanded state of being it's peaceful it's calm um, it's kind of like that space where you can visualize and then there's nothing arguing with what you're seeing right so like have you ever been in a reverie while you're driving in a, your car and you're in the kind of transported you're in this other place you're in theta and you're just in this whole other world right and there's all these other rules and everything so what we do is we use your eyes as a way to pause your neurology and as you roll your eyes up it causes your brain to quiet down and start to wait for information and we take you through a very specific visualization that mimics going into deep hypnosis except you are completely awake the whole time okay so what we do is and, or, and as you do that as you lower your brain wave your vibration starts to rise up and then you start connecting into this greater field of intelligence of pure open potential and then we make this statement of what we want and so we'll say the one command statement which is i don't know how and we state whatever it is that we want and we'll say i only know it's so now and i am fulfilled well we say i don't know how because right now even though we might have a good idea on what we should be doing and what we want to do and we've tried to follow the steps if we knew how to do it we would already do it right <laughs> we would be doing it even though we might go yeah that makes sense if you anybody ever try to build a website and you go yeah you watch the tutorials and they go here's the steps and you go well that's simple right and then you start following the instructions and you go why is this hard it looked so easy <laughs> there because you don't know what you don't know right and um you could run up against your beliefs about uh, your ability to learn it could run up against your beliefs about you being techie it could be the first time you're confronted with hey describe who you are and what you do right and we have all these little rules and when we raise our vibration we're raising it to match the thing that we desire. And then we're, as we're awakened to it, we make the statement, I don't know how, then we state what we want. And then we say, I only know it is so now and I am fulfilled. So let's say that um, right now we, you know, what, 30 million people are out of work and they have no idea what the next step is <laughs> there are 30 you know there's a lot more people at work and they still don't know what's going to happen so there's all this uncertainty right and they need to know that their security is in place they have literally have no idea because what was working up into eight weeks ago is all those rules are out the window every one of it and so how can we do that how can we meet that well we've run up against the ultimate i don't know how so right now when we say i don't know how the brain relaxes it goes good because i don't know i got to stop pushing i'm going to stop looking for those keys right and we stop i'm going to stop i'm going to wait and get information i'm going to give some space here i don't know how good then we say i only know so in our case for the economy i don't know how i am thriving in the new economy that is arriving I only know I am thriving now. I don't know how I am prospering in the face of uncertainty. I only know I am 
now and I am fulfilled. So we always say I am now because in the unconscious mind, there's only now. And when you're worried about it, it's now. Like if you go, well, rent was due on the first, <sighs> but I still got more bills coming up on the 15th and I don't know what to do, right? Well, right now you're worried about the 15th. So I don't know how my bills are paid in full in time and on time. I only know it's so now and I am fulfilled. So we're declaring what it is that we want. And then we say, I only know it is so now. So that's kind of like the secret of the command. And I am fulfilled is that state of that we want to um, receive it. And also that it comes into the, the answer comes to you in a way that is aligned to your highest and greatest good. It fits your skills, your vision, your purpose, and whatever it took to get to that point, you're going to feel it's worth it. And because you're aligned to your purpose, the hard things become easier. Then things just kind of start happening. Phone calls start showing up, money start showing up, bills start dissolving, people <laughs> start appearing into your world. And then we're just starting to um, meet the world as a person who said, yes, this is what I wanted. I didn't know how it was going to be, and I've called forth, and now I'm ready to meet it, right? We're just going to meet it in delight and appreciation, okay? So we're not trying to boss anything around. We're not telling God what to do. We're actually speaking to our own greater intelligence. We're talking really, here's the secret. We're speaking to that director that's running the frontal lobe, <laughs> but we're doing it in a way that unifies your whole brain to where every part of your past experience, your what you're experiencing now and what you vision for the future, all aligns to that and is at ser service to whatever it is that you want to create. Okay, so what we're going to do today, that's the thumbnail version. <laughs> is that helpful? I don't know if that helped people. Um, but that's the thumbnail version of what we're going to be doing. So I'm collecting what your commands are in the chat bar. Type what it is that you're commanding for. And um, then we are going to, I'm going to take you through the um, commands. I'm going to try to um, do all that. And I always like to check in with people. But um, I just want to share something that, Time was on my mind. It's been on my mind um, with with everything that's happening in the news. And um, I'm coming from a one a spiritual perspective, and I'm coming also. You know, I grew up um, working class, <laughs> work good good hard working people. Um, if y'all know me, you know that I come from. Um, I was raised. Uh, by someone like my dad's family and my mom was married a couple of times and she was kind of a, attracted to these farm boys who um, were um, motivated and entrepreneurial and um, three of the people she married while I was growing up you know when I say my dad I'm talking more about the office but um, I grew up around people that were working class people um, usually first generation off of the farm. So there was this big like, hey, community, we're all in it together. We help, you know, like that independent resilience, but also where we help each other, right? And um, then entrepreneurship was the path, right? So uh, owning a small business. And um, all of my dads wound up going into business for themselves, different businesses and um, worked really hard and really made something of themselves in, in an incredible way. And um, so I had these deep working class roots growing up in places called like Pleasant Grove and um, like wood frame house, two bedrooms, one bath. <laughs> and uh, I think I was 18 before I wore shoes every day. <laughs> So just a kind of like in town redneck kind of thing. So that comes from there. But at the same time, had very spiritual, um, very intuitive people. 
And so always thinking about that greater good. How can we help people? And this is a common theme. And anytime there was a tragedy in my family, anytime there was a big loss, a big setback, the first thing that I have heard everyone in my family ever say, and it doesn't matter, it's, you know what, on the other side of this, we're going to be able to help a lot of people. On the other side of this, we're going to be able to help a lot of people. My sister um, lost her son who was at age 16, and he was the darling of the family. And the first thing she said is, I got to figure out how, how this got caused in our lives. What caused this? Where did we miss it? Because I don't want anyone else to ever go through this. And every person said, we're going to be able to help a lot of people because of our experience, not just because of the loss, but because of the growth. And if I have anything to be grateful for about my raisin, <laughs> that would end every argument about anything I've ever experienced, any pain or trauma or anything in my own life, it's that gift, okay, that came from my family that said, I, and, and that pre, you know, presupposes that one, we're going to get through it, that we're strong enough. And then the other thing it presupposes is that we're not doing it alone and that us going through this is ultimately going to help more people and not only just get through tragedy, but also be better on the other side of it. And so I think I may owe that to my mom. I don't know where that would have come from, but I will always be grateful for that. And so that is my main view on every single thing. I'm just going to let you know that. And so with this coming up and then especially what's happening in the U.S. and watching what's happening with the money and watching how there's this big wealth transfer going on and how easy it is to send trillions of dollars into this giant slush fund of no accountability and then and most people being left out right, who really need it, whose li straight up livelihoods are being affected, and they're being forced into situations that um, are taking them out of choice. And that has got my redneck rebel <laughs> hackles up, I'm going to tell you. And so I've really had to be praying on this and thinking about this and going, well, you know, I teach the one command and I've actually taught people, hey, if you argue about where money goes, you're in that argument, you're actually going to block your money good, right? So I'm having to confront some deeply held money beliefs about the poor and the rich and the disparity between the poor and the rich probably has not been at this level since probably medieval times, honestly. And to where it, and then um, to where there would be in England where like the land barons and all of that. But just having to look at that and in the wounding and because I do feel it and I feel this deeply, I feel people's pain, right? So having to make this decision, one, who do I want to be now, right? Do I want to be someone who is powerless? No. Do I want to help others find their power? Yes. Do I want to help us have a new conversation about money and how it's distributed and how can we meet these times and how can our voice be heard? I'm really thinking about that stuff. And then how can we connect into our ability, our greater capacity to create what we need by our command, right? And so that's where this is. And so this isn't being political. This is really what's up in consciousness because in everything that we meet it, that could maybe be a negative, a trauma, a loss, there also contains within 
let's say that challenge opportunity and there's a blessing okay and the blessing that's come from this is a lot of people one have said you know what you know like i'm lucky i, I haven't had i'm not a nurse i'm not in the medical field i'm not spending all the hours in the er i'm lucky i haven't lost someone to this but what i have heard and what i've have tuned into is you know what i realize i like living a, a slower life more in control of my own time i finally get to have time with my own thoughts i have time with my family i'm finally having the rest i have time to think about what i want and there's this new discussion about hey what is really valuable and important to us and the simplicity and people really getting tuned back to what it is they really want instead of what they were told that they wanted and being told hey here's how you get that oh do you want the guy do you want the girl buy our stuff right do you want the prestige do you want the recognition do you want this buy our stuff no it's coming back to people really tuning into what they want need and desire and what they want their life to be about and that makes me really excited and um, there's scary stuff going on but i see the light on the other side of this because i see the light in people okay and so what I want to do commands on today is how we can write, how can we be the ones that rise up to meet this? Like, because it can feel like this is a bigger wave that's bigger than us. And I want you to know that whatever it is that you feel like you're confronting, there's a capacity within you that's a hundred thousand times greater. And the purpose of the circle is to help align you to that greater intelligence and that greater capacity. Okay. So is this making sense? Are y'all with me on this? And so I'm going to read some of these. Um, we've got Shama. I'm commanding for abundance of love and care from all my children. And Shama, I want you to know I, got, I did get your email. I haven't had a chance to respond, but I'm going to send you an appointment link. Okay. Um, Richard to support Betsy in healing the family dynamics. Elaine, today, huge, hang, huge thank you to the one command and a command for spontaneous healing. Elaine commanding, as you said, aligning to my new successes and fully stepping into my power so I can use my skills to help others. Avaro's commanding to build a social and sustainable business on bringing the one command Spanish version to the Spanish speaking world. Yes, let's talk more about Alvaro. You and I have some stuff to talk about because I run all of the commanding wealth stuff now. And Asara is, um, and um, Eden is doing the one command business, but Asara is effectively retired and is going to be doing some writing and speaking, but is moving on to some other things. So let's definitely talk about that. Um, Joanna. Yesterday was my late mom's birthday and I started crying and I allowed myself that. I've not really allowed myself to feel the grief of this whole situation. Well, I'm feeling it now and I'm not able to focus on myself or the work at hand and I really need to be able to, as I'm behind on projects, I'd really like to let go of the grief and sadness and be able to happily focus on my attention on moving forward. Uh, grief's a bugger <laughs> grief happens in its own time and i think the best thing that we can do with the grief and with anything when we're having any of our no emotions is to be present to them and be really fully present in the space with it and that's a little different than crying you know having a good cry it's coming from this aspect of your mom was such a powerful force in your life. And um, when I shifted over to like, you know what, the loss of this relationship, the loss of this situation is worthy of my grief. It's worthy to honor this loss and the pain of this loss. When I shifted over to not judging it or try to push it, it I found that it was softer it was easier to flow and because I wasn't trying to argue with whether or not I had grief. That's my number one piece of advice, but just 
say, you know what, this is worthy of our tears. The relationship in the life of your mom's worthy of your tears and the loss of that guidance and that help. And um, I, listen, my mom was a hard one for me too, because it was a big positional shift to the center of my universe, literally spun. <laughs> and um, I was supposed to step into the middle of it. And it, that was a hard identity to change. And so we're just going to, let's just love her and honor her and those that we lost. Okay. Because they're worthy of it. Okay. And then Karen's like, bless you. This is my dad's birthday month. He's also gone and I still talk to him. So let that grief out, give yourself a break. And then Betsy's to be more of a peacemaker to my daughter and son and learn how to appeal to their better side. Um, Sue's like, I don't know how I easily communicate and share my knowledge, insights, and mastery and connect with those who can benefit from it now. I only know it so now, and I am fulfilled. Um, Alex is commanding for amazing flow of alignment, clients, and flowing in my good. And Nash is commanding for an idea that does not exist. I love that, <laughs> right? We are literally creating from the unknown, okay? Ooh, all right. So I'm going to be checking in with everybody afterwards. So here's what I want to do. I want to just tune into you. Today is a little more um, channeling, <laughs> a little more channeling. I just want to tune in to um, you, and I want to take you through a visualization, okay? And um, the technique's called mapping across. But the question I like to ask people is, think about what it is that you want, that you're commanding for. So like with Betsy, who wants to be in the role of being the peacemaker, right? And so I want to reframe that just slightly. Betsy, and what would it be like if you were the peace? not having to make the peace. Your kids are gonna be making the peace. That's their job. But your job is to hold the vision and to be the peace, okay? And there's a prayer that I love where I'll, I'll pray and I go, you know, God, I don't know how to be peaceful right here, but right now I'm just gonna ask that you be the peace. God, please be the peace in me. And be that peace until I know how to be that peace. So it's like I'm just allowing that to be that gap, right? I'm allowing myself to not know and allow that greater part of me. So if you were peace, okay, if you were peace, not at peace, not having the feeling of peace, but you were like, you know what, when I'm with Betsy, I'm just peaceful. She is so peaceful in her way of thinking and feeling and being. She's so at peace and has such this trust. I know everything's going to be okay. That you could just create that activation. <sighs> Heck, I want to be that peace. How about you guys? If we can think about Joanna and she wants to be productive, right? She want, but we, I think of everything that we're commanding for is to be in that peaceful space so that that new idea can come forth, so that the plan can arise, so that our clients, so that we're quiet we're, with this peacefulness and, and all this noise that's in the world that people are able to hear us through our silence, what it, what it, through our peace. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how to be peace. I don't know how to live from a state of peacefulness. <sighs> we don't know. Literally, how could we know when we have literally been traumatized in the last, I mean, gosh, I'm 62, right? So at age four, well, I'm a, I'm a baby in the Korean wars going on, but then, you know, I'm in first grade and Kennedy's assassinated and then the Vietnam war and there's all the, 
um, you know, riots and protests and all that uncertainty, right? And then we have a little thing called uh, Mount St. Helens. And then, you know, there's all your personal trauma, have 9-11 and depressions and recessions and we have you know everything that meets up life and we have trauma in our collective and in our personal dna right we don't know and there's this molecule inside of us in order to stay safe we're almost like organizing everything in our the center of our being around trauma okay around trauma we are in a traumatic experience now. The collective is going through the trauma of birth right now. So we don't know how to unwind so that trauma can be released and that we are at peace. So when we connect into source, we're gonna ask for a download of peace, okay? <sighs> There we go. Yeah, even Shama saying peace in the family with love. All right, so right now, I just want to align with you heart to heart. The master in me greeting the master in you. And in this space, let there only be love between us. So put your hand on your heart if you're able to right now. Just focus on your heart and settle into your body and think about what it is that you want to create. And more importantly, who do you want to be? I love the idea of just using peace as our model today and you can bring in any other part that you desire. Okay. <sighs> So if you were living, moving, and breathing in a peaceful way, what would your life look like? And think of a particular part of your life. Think about, for some people, that's their money, right? How they do their business, how they're meeting their clients, um, how they're creating how you're cleaning your house, how you're counseling and being present in your relationships. But if you were absolutely in peace, what would that look like? Get an image in your mind right now. If you feel blank, it's okay. If you don't get it, a thought, an image, or an idea, if you can't even imagine it, it's okay. But let's just assume that there's a point of time in the future that it does exist, okay? And you're there and you notice, wow, I, I feel peaceful now. Maybe in the past I would have been freaked out, but I feel okay. I feel peaceful. It's all right. And you could see yourself having that experience of awareness of your own peace. How would that feel? Like, would you be delighted? Would you be surprised? Would you be like, wow, I can't believe, you know, why wasn't I like this before? Or would you say, yes, I love this. I want more of this. And maybe all of that. And so let's just be grateful in advance for that experience of that which you desire being fulfilled. Now come back to here and now with me. You got Catherine in your ear. We're on Zoom, right? You're wherever you are wherever you're sitting, wherever you're listening to me right now, kind of look around. And 
just think about now the times in the past that you felt peaceful when it didn't necessarily make sense that you were at peace, but you just somehow knew it was going to be okay. In fact, people were maybe trying to get you to be freaked out and go, I'm not worried. Can you think of a time that you just knew it was okay? Maybe it was your experience. Maybe you just had a feeling. Maybe you'd gotten a sign. I don't know. But if you could think about a time in the past that you felt absolutely at peace. Maybe it was after a time of prayer and meditation. Maybe it was a time of being comforted. But just tune into that time in the past that you were at peace. <sighs> and now just be present to the peace in the past. And now just imagine that all of that energy of that peace is going to start flowing to you now, the peace from the past. And it's going to flow through everything that happened in the meantime that maybe caused you to forget about how powerful you are and the power of, the state of, the power of this peaceful state of being. how it shifted everyone and everything around you. So right now, just let that peaceful feeling come forward and just let the peace do the work. There's nothing for you to do, but simply let the peace do the work to be the peace. even if you don't quite understand. In fact, there's a phrase for that. He said, passes all understanding. And then think about the times that you helped someone else feel peaceful, that you were their encouragement. And when you did that, you go, wow, I, I would love to help even more people have this, this feeling. And just, just think about those times and bring that peace that you created forward. And now let that peace from the past, and this peace that you're feeling right now, continue to move forward to that moment that we stated before, that it's in the future, you're living the life that you wanted, you've got the clients, you've got the money, the programs you want to create is happening. Your relationships are happening. Maybe you're at dinner with your family and you see the start of what in the past could have turned into like a big argument and it turns into a growth moment. Or maybe there's this level of client that you never dealt with before and, and you were afraid to go after them and now they're coming after you and you are completely at peace because you feel ready. You go, wow, in the past, if I were to meet someone like this, I would be freaked out. But today I feel peaceful and like I'm meeting a new friend. Or you find that you're just walking around in this energy and it's, you're just noticing doors are opening and instead of wishing and thinking you could and maybe you got to get ready for it you just feel so peaceful you just walk through the door or you pick up the pen and start writing or you sit down at the keyboard and you start noticing that the things you couldn't do before it feels easy and you start having new experiences. And now, even in the future, there's a level of peace that you didn't even ever stop to consider that could exist. And now let yourself flow to that greater understanding and potential. And again, just let peace do the work. Let peace be the path. Let peace make the way. Let peace give the message. 
bringing your attention back to your heart to here and now. And right now, I'm just going to make a command. I don't know how I am living, moving, and breathing in a state of peace. And from that state of peace, I am confident. And I have more than enough courage. And I have all the clarity I ever wanted, needed, or desired. I only know I am peacefully creating that which I desire by my command now. And I am fulfilled. And just breathe into that. Now just feel your connection to the earth. And we're just going to let the earth energy begin to connect with you and support you. Now, I'm just going to invite you as you're aligned to your purpose of that which you want to create. I just want to invite you to roll your eyes up as if you're trying to look up through the top of your head and picture, visualize, or imagine that you are traveling up a pole of light. And the higher you go, the faster you go, and soon you find yourself surrounded by this beautiful, velvety, black void of space as you come right to the edge of the universe. Break through that darkness into the light of pure, open potential. Eyes up. I don't know how, I'm going to just say it for you, I don't know how I came to live, move, and breathe in a state of peace, and I don't know how everyone in my life is free to be at peace as well. I only know I release them to their peace. I release them. So that peace can do the work now and I am fulfilled. You can let your eyes just relax. Let that expand out to an idea even greater that serves more good. And I don't know how I release trauma and all the molecules of trauma and fear and loss. I only know that everything that I've ever experienced takes me closer to my highest and greatest good. And because of what I experience, I am able to help more people than ever before. I only know that all things have worked together for my good now, and I'm committed to the good of others. And I am fulfilled. And I don't know how I am drawing to me, attracting to me, manifesting that which I want, need, and desire. And it's coming to me in the form that I desire, maybe through the channel of my business or through my relationships. I don't know how I am living, moving, and breathing in a state of peace, and it is creating radiant health. I only know that I have everything I could ever want, need, or desire now, and I am fulfilled. Just let that go. Let that expand out. And I don't know how I have a new vision of what is possible and what I am possible. I only know I am possible now. I only know there's a greater potential within me, and I align to it now, and I am fulfilled. Just let all that go. Let that expand out. And in this pole of light and everything that we've created, there's everything you could ever want, need, or desire. Yes, including the good relationships with your kids, a new vision. As that pattern gets released in you and it starts unwinding in them, 
This is literally changing your DNA. And so just grab a hold of that light and feel yourself coming down that pole of light and bringing in you this new state of peace, of understanding, and all the plans to support it, all the skills, attributes, and abilities, all the relationships that you need, including the supernatural skill of being at peace in all situations, while being empathetic, while being caring, while taking right action. And now we're just going to allow all that to align. And as that's coming in, we're just going to unwind, unwind, unwind all the old trauma, all the old drama, all the old systems, habits, and protocols. We're just going to let it go, let it go, let, let it go. And then we're just going to bring it all the way down to that original molecule that we talked about, that original molecule of trauma. And just witness that trauma. Witness that trauma and that polarity being flipped, being transformed into that molecule of peace of courage and compassion. And now witness rewinding, 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 everything reorganizing all the way around that through every cell and fiber of your being. And as that's naturally reorganizing, witness your family dynamic start to reorganize itself as you're moving yourself in this new position. Witness your business dynamics. Witness your money dynamics. Witness your, um, your creativity dynamics start to shift. The ways that you used to go get money are so different. Now, let's let money come chase you, pursue you. And I don't know how I'm opening myself to new potential and new thoughts, images, and ideas and new opportunities. I only know I am opening now. And I walk through now. I step forward now in my greatness and I am fulfilled. Did you bring your attention back to your heart? <sighs> Open your eyes. I just want to tune back into you as you think about what it is that you wanted to command for and you think about living from this state of being and we're going to call it peace today i mean i want my prosperity i want my money i want my opportunities to come in a way that is peaceful organic and natural but also i want everything that i do to create more peace in the world i want to be there more wealth more confidence better relationships Right, so that's what we're talk, walking through. As you think about your life now, what do you see? What do you feel? <sighs> Beautiful. I'm going to open it up. Um, um, if you have something to share, unmute yourself, and then I'll call on you, okay? Yeah, Alex is saying, wow, definitely more ideas that were not there before, less overwhelm. Beautiful, beautiful. When you think about that, so who has something to share? What do they see now that maybe they didn't know before? I'm going to turn into Elaine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Catherine. How are you? I'm doing well. <laughs> I, I, I want to... A huge, enormous thank you for the one command yesterday. Uh, you know, Mel's had these issues, health issues, pretty bad. 
and um, his kidneys, blood pressure, this and this and this. And his, the doctor just kept saying that he was, oh, it's all allergies and this and this and this, but go and see a cardio, cardiologist anyway. Mm -hmm. So last month I made an appointment and I was told that the earliest because of COVID-19 was June 10th. Oh. Uh, yes. And so he saw his doctor yesterday and she said, oh, yes, definitely. We'll give you some other medicine, but you'll make the appointment. I, he said, you already did. So I came, he came home yesterday and told me. And so I immediately commanded. I called the cardiologist and was told, no, there is no way we can get him in before June 10th because only three patients a day. Mm -hmm. And so I just commanded for the things to turn out well for him. And just before the call this morning, I received a call from the cardiologist's office that they'll see him at two o'clock today. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I'm so happy. Thank you for sharing that with us. So um, I just, I, I, I want to get him some spontaneous healing because he has been through so much. Yeah. Just so much this year. And, but yes, it's, isn't it? The one command is marvelous. I mean, it, it, it oh, the proof of the pudding. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, there's no way. We had someone on the Commanding Wealth Group that his wife had emergency gallbladder um, surgery, and they were going, we're so sorry, everything's just overtaken, and we don't know where we would even put her, but they had to go ahead and take care of her. And lo and behold, he said, well, I don't know how my wife has a room. I don't know how there's an, a, a great room for my wife. I only know there is now. And they said, well, you know, we have this... Um, uh, birthing suite that is not being used so let's go ahead and move her down there <laughs> so they could all go. He's <laughs> and so he said definitely deluxe accommodation so it turned out to be perfect so thank you so much and we witnessed that just keep speaking it's like I don't know how he's already healthy and whole I only know his health is his heart is strong and um, you know, there is, you know, it is a missing piece that y'all haven't been able to figure out that's about to get revealed and then it's going to get cleared up. It really is. But just keep speaking his wholeness and his wellness. Okay. Thank and you. the right doctors. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Kathy. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, Betsy, we kind of leapt off of you. I'm going to unmute you just for a second. Okay. Are you there? Um, Thank you. Yes, for I, <laughs> I am. And the, the, the uh, exercise was great. Um, I can be the peace, um, and I feel sometimes I have to let go and let God be the peace for me. And I realize you, you mentioned addiction. I have a daughter who's a, an addict, not only to alcohol, but to, to the drama or to the situation. Mm -hmm. And I realized that yesterday was chaos on the phone with the chat for my other kids getting all riled up. And I realized all I need to do is try and just have that peace and be there and mm -hmm. not let that situation overwhelm me because it is your child and you see mm -hmm. disaster. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I can stand back now and just be there. And should I have to, or comes up, I hope I speak peace to them mm -hmm. so that they can get out of their chaos, but I don't have to. It's right. just what it'll present itself. It's if it's supposed to. Yeah. So that relieves me of the, the need to take over. So I'm very happy with that. And I, I have a side comment. And um, the, the one is, you know, a lot of times with family, they'll bring their bad behavior, they'll bring the drama and the beef to your house or different situations. Right? Yes. And it's like, you know, if you two have a fight, y'all need to go fight someplace else. You're not bringing that. Yes. Here, right. That's good. I um, care. Off. <laughs> yeah, my sister 
you know, tried to start some arguments one time, like as we were at my mom visiting my mom and she just kind of landed into me. I said, I'm not going to deal with you. I'm not going to deal with this here. We're at our mom's house. We are not here to have a fight. We're not doing this here. And she's like, oh, you know, like trying to still bait me. Right. And my mom's just kind of watching this and go, we can, you want to have this fight? I have time tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you, let's uh, meet at two o'clock tomorrow and we'll have a good fight right yes. right now we're at mom's <laughs> and we're not doing it here right yes. but my mom was like that was amazing I said you know what I don't get to spend that much time with you when I come to see you I want to have fun with you so right. we're not having fights here right even though my mom could have said look you're not you, you two take it out all of a sudden like I rose up and I was like the mom in the moment and I yes. just said no this is the place of peace. This is the rules. If you want to be here, you want to be in a conversation with me, this is the rule. Otherwise it's over. Right. And so, right. Taking right. That authority, but doing it from a peaceful place and assuming that they have the ability to work it out. That's right. true. And it wasn't really me, but I was pulled into it and it was a group text kind of thing. And, yeah. um, I, I just, I just said, if someone wants to talk to me privately, please text me privately. Yeah. Um, and I just left the group chaos because it was upsetting to me and I had yeah. to get away from Yeah. And it's like somehow to, I don't know, it's like what whatever it is they think they're going to get as a result of pulling you in, right? Well, we just want them to have it, but they don't have to make your life miserable. That's right. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. I hope that was this helpful today. Yes, it was, Catherine. Very. All right. Thank you. All right. I just want to tune in. Anybody else? Any questions or comments? Was this helpful today for you guys? And um, oh, sorry. There you go, Richard. Hi. <laughs> Hi. No, it was a. Uh, it was very helpful. It's always. It always is. It was. Um, um, I just felt something shifted. I mean, it may not be evident as far as the outer world, but it's something shifted inside of me. And I, um, as far as the group, the family dynamics and inside of me, and yeah. I'm, I feel inside of Etsy, something changed too. Yeah. And I just, good. I just feel, you know, I witnessed to you though, that, uh, you were, what you were channeling was coming for, I think you know this, I think everybody knows this, but just to witness it, it's coming for a very, very, very high place. It was very sublime. And I just want to thank you for allowing us, the spirit to use you in that way today. I thank mean, it's you. always that way, but it was just a little bit extra today somehow. Yeah. So I'm witness yeah. to that. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Um, oh my gosh, Hannah. Hannah just joined us. She's in the UK. And yes, you missed it, honey. It's an hour earlier. <laughs> an hour earlier. <laughs> So um, noon central time U.S. and we're on um, daylight saving time. But let me just mute Hannah right quick and say hi. And um, I want to let people know too. Oh, Hannah, I can't get to you. I'm so sorry. Um, there's two places to watch the uh, replay. I do have it in the TOC Money Mindset Mastery Group. And I sent an email out. Um, letting people know what my YouTube channel was, and I'm posting all the replays there. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hello, Miss Hannah. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry you missed it. We you had quite a channeling session, but um, as soon as the recording's available, I will um, make sure you get a hold of it. Okay. okay? It's interesting because I put a I put a reminder on my phone from last week and I don't uh -huh. know somehow I must have missed the hours wrong and put the wrong time. Anyway, no problem. Well, thank we're you good that you recorded and... it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And then um, Fridays I'm doing this coaching corner, and um, I think what happened was um, I had started the video. Something happened. And I had to restart it, and I think it a lot of people couldn't refine me again. So it was a very short call that I just kind of was talking by myself. It was all by myself, guys. <laughs> no one was there with me. 
<laughs> but anyway, Fridays at uh, 1 p.m. Central Time in the TLC Money Mindset Mastery Group, I have uh, a coaching corner where I can answer your questions directly. Okay, so keep an eye out for that. And I want to check for any other questions or comments. Let me see if I can find the right slide. Watch me just dink around here. Pardon me. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to check one more time. All right. Well, and and one any more? Yeah. Coaching Corner YouTube channel. Thanks, Catherine. Friday, 1 p.m. Central Coaching Corner. Yes. All right. Shama saying, I love the process. Now you're grounded. Oh, I appreciate you guys. All right. I'm going to go ahead and let you go. Until next time, this is Catherine Perry, the Big Vision Coach, and I witness your mastery. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye, everyone.